Good afternoon, sunshines. And today I want us to start practicing our first standard weather briefing together using real time weather. I want us to go from Phoenix to Memphis. On D2L, I have uploaded this document I want you guys to find. It says Standard Weather Briefing Directions, Phoenix to Memphis Practice. So we've got these basics that we'll cover. Here's the flight plan specifics, and then I have down here um, the different categories that we'll go over. Okay, so we're going to depart Phoenix. Um, the website we're going to be using is aviationweather.gov. As for the other websites, if there's something you'd rather use, if you have um, electronic E6B or you have four flight, feel free to use any resources you want. But I'll be using Sky Vector for flight planning, and I'll be using um, airnav.com for their approaches, and then, of course, aviationweather.gov. So we're going to depart at 0130 Zulu. We're, I'm doing that to give... Um, um, us time to look up this weather and then ideally I'm going to call a weather briefer um, and we're going to see just how close um, our weather briefing is to what would actually be. Of course I'll tell them that this is a practice briefing. Well, I've also uploaded a wind component document on D2L um, but again if you have an electronic E6B uh, feel free to com compute your um, headwind and tailwind that way. So we're going to be taking off from Phoenix at 0130 and arriving into Memphis and we have to determine our estimate time of arrival so let's go to Sky Vector when you go to Sky Vector I've already inputted some information here I've got KPHX for Phoenix KMEM I want our speed to be 400 knots um, and since we're going um, easterly on an IFR flight it has to be an odd thousand number so our flight level will be 370 that's just for now. We haven't checked winds or anything yet, so that might change. Um, and I said we were going to leave at 0, 0130, right? Let's confirm that. Yep. So then when you click that, it populates the distance and the estimated time and route in route. And then you can click this here, and it gives you several options because they also overlay the weather radar. Of course we haven't checked the weather yet to see which one we want but we'll just go with the first one so we'll round up to 1115 two hours and 20 minutes so let's make that 0350 Zulu for our arrival time we'll be flying a Boeing 737-800 flight number LTN for Lightning 2773. Our captain is Captain Laguimwa, and she has 92 hours PIC, and that matters because she is what I call a baby captain, which means she has less than 100 hours in that particular type of aircraft, so we'll have to increase her landing minimums because this is a 121 flight. <clears throat> we'll have to increase the landing minimums by adding 100 to the decision height and adding half to the visibility. And first officer is Davidson. There is an MEL item here, System 34-25, and remember MEL means something is inoperative, so our altitude alerting system is inoperative, and that means RVSM operations are not conducted, repairs have to be made within three flight cycles, and airplanes not dispatched from Dallas, Houston, or Phoenix. So, can we dispatch this flight? The answer is no, because we are departing from one of the stations it said we can't depart from. So we will either swap planes, right, or contact maintenance to repair. Because we will not be able to fly. This is not emailable because we're departing Phoenix. But also I have a note here, like what does RVSM indicate when it says no RVSM? Uh, you guys can look it up in the back of your aim if you want. Um, it's reduced vertical separation minimum. So RVSM begins at flight level 290. That's where ATC actually brings everyone um, closer together. It reduces the vertical separation minimums down to 1,000 feet. And so the translation for this, if you see another MEL item like this, it means that you have to restrict your flight level to below flight level 290, 
which means we cannot fly two nine zero, right? Which means the um, highest we can fly is flight level two eight zero and below. But this is not going to be an MEL item because we can't fly, right? So we're going to either swap airplanes or ask maintenance to repair it and move on past that. So let's see. Are we legal to take off? We're taking off from Phoenix, and this is just for my reminder, at 0130. Okay. How do we determine if we're legal to take off? Do you guys remember? Legal to take off is based on visibility. Boeing 737 800 has two engines, so we know we need one statute mile or 5,000 RVR. So let's go to the weather for Phoenix. Let's first start with the METAR. And we have 10 statute miles, so that looks great. Let's go ahead and look at the forecast. So we're taking off a little bit later, right? So let's see. This line doesn't start until 0600 Zulu, so we're looking at the first line. The first line is greater than six statute miles. So are we legal to take off? The answer is yes. In the METAR forecast, 10, oops, 10 statute miles. And the TAP is greater than six statute miles. So we are good to go with that. Do you guys agree with that? We are legal to take off. And this is exactly what I would want you guys to do for your practice assignments coming up, as well as the group project, is I want you guys to like elaborate on everything. Don't assume that I understand um, what you're saying. Like write it all out. And it also helps you to understand when you write it out. So we know we're legal to take off. The next question is, do we need a takeoff alternate? How do we determine that? You need a takeoff alternate when the weather is below the landing minimums at your takeoff. So for me, I'm going to go to airnav.com and I'm going to find a Phoenix approach. I'm going to check the landing minimums. Minimums. And I'm going to determine if the weather meets the minimums. Okay, Phoenix, 260 is the wind, um, right now, oh, I want to know the wind, and that says variable, so let's go with the tap at 260 the winds, because I'm trying to figure out, you know, we want to take off with a headwind, and we want to land with a headwind. We have the headwind component chart, guys. That I should have pulled up for you, but um, pretty straightforward to be honest. You've got your wind speed on one side and your angle between wind and heading, but we'll practice that later. For now, if we have winds from 260, obviously runway 26 or 25 would be ideal, right? You want to pick the number, you want to pick the runway number closest to the wind direction because the wind is where it's blowing from and the runway, you're taking off into it, right? So the closer the number, the, the more of a headwind component. So let me make sure I'm at Phoenix. Let me start back at the beginning for this website so you know how to do it. So you go to airnav.com.com, click on airports, and let's put in our departure airport of Phoenix. And then you've got your airport information, your sectional chart here, airport diagram, I really like this one where you can calculate your distance. Sometimes I'll verify that to make sure Sky Vector is correct on it and hit calculate distance. Then you go to the bottom and you'll see your stars, which are standard terminal arrivals. You're, you will see your instrument approaches as well as your DPs, departure procedures and SIDS. So let's do an ILS um, into runway 26. Let's look. So, what are the landing minimums for ILS runway 26? Straight in, 1385 is your decision altitude and MSL. We have three quarters visibility and the 250 is your decision height. So, let's see, our landing minimums 
or three quarter statute miles. And I think I said 250. 250 is your, 250 feet is your decision height. And remember that's an AGL. Okay, so do we need to take off alternate? Guys, what did we say? Let's copy paste the METAR. So we don't have to keep looking back. Here's our METAR. And then I would like to grab the tap also. Okay, so how's my visibility looking? I got 10 statute miles and I got greater than six. So we're good with that, right? And now the decision height is an AGL, so we're looking for ceilings. On the METAR, I don't even have a ceiling. I have few clouds, that's not a ceiling. And in the TAP, I don't have a ceiling. Sky's clear. So do we need to take off alternate? The answer is we, whoops. Oh, it's acting weird. Let's go back up here. We do not need to take off alternate because the weather in the METAR and TAP are above the landing minimums. How do you feel about that? In other words, if the visibility was less than three quarters or less than 250, you would need to take off alternate. If it was exactly at it, guys, you don't need to take off alternate, right? It's only if the weather is below the landing minimum. So we just needed the visibility to be three quarters and we just needed the ceiling to be 250. And it is, so we do not need to take off alternate. Next question is, are you legal to dispatch to your destination? And I made myself a note here. Uh, we have a high men's captain. Remember, she has less than... 100 hours PIC in that specific aircraft. So how do we know if we're legal to dispatch to our destination? We go to our destination um, approach, which is Memphis, and we look at their landing minimums because that is the requirement to land there, right? Those are the landing minimums. And then we go and we, fix, we look at our ETA and we look at our weather and we see if we're going to have that. If we do not have the minimums forecasted, we cannot take off and fly towards our destination. Does that make sense? So our estimate time of arrival into Memphis was what time? What did we say? 0350 Zulu. So two things. One, we need to go to AirNav, find the Memphis approach, look at the landing minimums, right? And then the second thing, is go to our weather, our METAR, our TAP, or any combination thereof, right? And determine if we actually have the weather min or landing minimums. Okay, so go back here to your airnav.com, go to airports, put in Memphis, Let's determine, let's find our, well, they don't have it listed there, so we have to go down here and manually find Memphis. We can actually find METAR and TAP that way. Let's do it that way. So let's see. We're arriving Memphis at 0350. Is that correct? Yeah. So, we're looking at the METAR. We can also look at the first line of the TAP because this is valid on the 21st uh, until the next day of, at the 2400 Zulu. Yeah. And then on the 31st, starting at 0, 0100 Zulu until 0, 0400, this is the line. We arrive 30 minutes before this line, guys, so we will not be looking at that weather. So we will look at this weather. And I will just copy, paste that into my actual briefing. I think that's just nice so you don't have to keep going back and forth. 
then we need to, okay, so then we look at the winds. Looks like the winds in the METAR are from 210. Then the winds in the TAF closer to our time are 120. So let's look at the TAF. So we've got winds from 120. What's our runway options for Memphis? Okay, so it looks like 1.8 would be reasonable for a headwind. Just quick calculation, right? I would actually have us calculate the wind components later. Well, 9 is good also. I didn't see runway 9. Oh, it's up there. It's hiding from me. Okay. Uh, which one do you guys want to use? Zero nine or one eight? Zero nine? Okay, it's the first one. Let's take a look. If we don't like the minimums here, if something happens and you didn't meet minimums on one approach and you did the other, obviously use the other one, right? So let's look at our mins here. So we zoom her in. ILS, runway nine, straight in. We've got 2400 RVR and 207 decision height. 2400 RVR, which is equivalent to how much visibility? Good, half statute miles. And 207 is the decision height. Okay, so those are the landing minimums. Everybody okay with that? We're trying to determine if, based on the forecast, when we get to Memphis at 0350 Zulu, will we be able to shoot the approach and land? Okay, do we have at least a half statute miles in both reports? We're good with the METAR, there's 10. We're great with the TAF, there's greater than six, and then there's six here. And mostly we're looking, I would say, at this line, because this is the one most applicable to our, our arrival. So we're good with six statute miles. Do we have 207 foot ceiling? Yes, we have an overcast ceiling at 6,000. So are we legal to dispatch to our destination? The answer is yes. We are legal to dispatch. Or sometimes, you know, I'll say we're legal to launch. Good with that? Okay. And this really takes practice. You'll get better in time. And then the fourth part, remember, all of this is just dealing with the legalities. Can we take off? Do we need to take off alternate? Are we legal to dispatch to our destination? Oh, which by the way, I made myself a note and I already forgot. Remember, we have a high men's captain, so we actually have to add 100 feet to the decision height and half statute miles to the visibility. So really, I'm sorry, our landing minimums are actually one statute mile, right? Because half and half is one. And our decision height is 307. That's actually our landing minimums because we have a baby captain, as I affectionately call them, when they have less than 100 hours in that aircraft. We want to give them a little bit of cushion. We want to give them a little more conservative landing minimums, right? So she actually has 307 decision height, one statute mile, still not a problem. Well above it, right? So the next question, guys, question four is, do you need a destination alternate? And if the answer is yes, do we need a second destination alternate? That's why I put an S there. And I said provide justification for all components, which we've been doing. So how do we know if we did need a destination alternate? Guys, remind me, what's the rule? Say it again. Good. It's the one, two, three rule. One, two, three rule. So we know that means you look an hour before, an hour after your estimated time of arrival. Our estimated time of arrival is 3.50. So we're going to look at 0, 0,250 and we're going to look at 0, 0,450 Zulu, right? And when we look at that, we're trying to look at two things. We're looking at the ceiling and we're looking at the visibility. The ceiling needs to be at least 2,000 and the visibility needs to be at least 3. Now, I do already have the METAR up here, right? And I do have part of the TAF, but I don't have the whole TAF. So let's go back. And let me actually get this because let's grab, let's just grab it all. Why not? So 
So an hour before 0250 would fit into this line and 0450 would fit into this line. Does everyone agree with that? If not, shoot me an email, let me know. Okay, do we have at least a 2,000 foot ceiling? We've got overcast at 6,000. That's good. We have overcast at 1,500. That is below 2,000. So really, I don't have to follow up. The next one, do we have at least three though? The answer is yes. But do we need a destination alternate? Yes, we do. Yes, a destination alternate is required because one hour after the ETA, ah, sorry, the ceiling is forecast to be overcast at 1,500 feet. And the requirement to not have an alternate was requirement is 2,000 feet. So yes, we do need a destination alternate. In regards to our standard briefing, guys, what that means is that we would also need to add additional fuel, right? Because remember, 121 minimum fuel is enough to get to your destination, your furthest alternate, plus 45 minutes. So while we may not, while we will not actually be calculating fuel um, for our standard weather briefing, I do want us to make a note that we would need additional fuel for this, right? Additional fuel will need to be added for our 121 minimum fuel requirements. How do you guys feel about that? I'll share this document on D2L also, the after product. Um, the second question would be, I'm going to add another one now since we do have an alternate. Question five is, do we need a second destination alternate? Guys, we need a second destination alternate when the weather is marginal at both your destination and your destination alternate. We need a second alternate when the mark when the weather is marginal at both your destination and your destination alternate. And we are defining marginal as 600 foot ceiling and or two statute miles. So we go back to our well, we haven't picked an alternate yet, but just looking at our destination, is it marginal? Nope. We've got um, and that's not an hour after our hour uh, before. It's the, your actual estimate time of arrival. So we are arriving at um, 0350 Zulu. So we're looking at this line right here, right, guys? Let me copy paste that one. And that weather is not marginal, right? We've got six statute miles and we've got an overcast at 6,000. So even if our first um, even if our destination alternate was marginal, our destination is not, so we will not need a second alternate. It's only if the weather's marginal at both. So, a second destination alternate is not required. Okay, well, now I want us to get started on our standard weather briefing. I have listed the parts here straight from the website. So when you guys do it, I want you to go to Tools and click on Standard Briefing, because that's what we're doing, and you will see that underneath each section, it gives you the reports or the forecast to look at. So um, first up, let's probably get some situational awareness on Sky Vector where we're at. So here is Phoenix. And here, and here is Memphis. Yeah, there it is. I just like to do that for situational awareness. We got a lot of junk right here. This is real-time radar. Um, so that's probably going to cause us some issues. Definitely while we have lower ceilings in the forecast, right? So let's just start from the top. Let's go to our segment. So go to advisories, click on segment.
All right, so we're going from Phoenix to Memphis. Looks like flying straight through all these convective segments. Now, I don't really see a gap, but even if I did, I don't want you guys to get in the practice of trying to shoot the gap. Because the thing is, guys, these are just forecasts. They can change. The storms can be uh, taller than anticipated. They can move faster. They can be stronger. So I would much rather you um, delay a flight or honestly go well around it. In this example, guys, these convective segments, let's look at this one. Well, let's just start here. This convective segment, it's valid until 0055. So this will... Um, this is not going to be valid by the time we're flying. No, no, that's not. Yeah, that's correct. We're taking on a 0130, right? But a lot of times, guys, these convective segments will extend. So I kind of don't want us to assume they will be gone yet, right? Because it's just a forecast. But you can see here, it gives you the altitudes or the locations. An area of embedded thunderstorm moving from 270 at 20 knots tops or to flight level 310. So if it's moving at 20 knots, we have to be 2,000 feet above it, right? Because for every 10 knots, you're 1,000 feet above it. And the tops are at 310, so we could plan to fly 2,000 feet above that. Uh, flight level 330. So that might be an, a good option for that one. Um, we can probably fly, you know, and avoid this convective segment, but let's just take a gander. This one tops at 280. Diminishing area embedded thunderstorms moving from 240, 45 knots. So you have to be 4,500 feet above that one. We could still fly above that, right? Because I said we were going to fly at 370. Let's take a look at this one. Now this one, uh, this one we're not flying above, guys, because where's the tops at? 400. So while we might be flying above that one, once I get here, we're going to have a problem. So I guess there's a few things, and everyone would be different. We'll ask the weather briefer what they think. We could either fly over these two and fly well around this one into Memphis, or we really could just kind of fly south of all this junk and add quite a bit of extra fuel on there. We could plan to fly south, and then if we get up in the air and we decide based on radar and information that it, you know a more direct route is safe, we can do that. But at least we have planned for additional fuel right? We've got alternates on there. We did, To be honest, here's the thing, guys. If you're doing your briefing and you see forecasted thunderstorms, even if you don't need an alternate on, based on the one, two, three rule, I want you to put an alternate on there. Did that make sense? Even if the regulations, you know, the doesn't say you need it. So let's say you've got a greater than 2,000 foot ceiling or at least that and you've got three statute miles or more, I still think it's always a good idea to have an alternate on a release when you've got forecasted weather. It's a lot better to have that option of a backup plan, right, and already have that fuel than to be up there and be scrambling around for a place to land and worrying about your reserves. So um, this time I don't think I'm going to type everything up. I just kind of want to go through it with you. And then, um, but, you know, eventually at some point soon um, I want you to actually start typing up the briefing as well. I kind of just want to go through it with you right now. So let's see. Oh, wrong wrong button. Hmm, I've never even seen that before. Tools, standard briefing. Um, so we already looked at the convective segment. Now I want us to look at if we have any non-convective segments and air mats, because that's all part of our, our adverse conditions, right? So let me just make, I'll make a, actually I do kind of want to jot some notes down. Um, there's really, I think we, at least three forecasted thunderstorms along the route. We're either going to fly above or circum navigate. We will keep an eye on the thunderstorms. So that was our convective segments, right? Then we need to look at our air mats and we need to look at our, oh, 
and our and and uh, if we have any non-convective sigmets. Remember, non-convective sigmets, guys, are still severe. Sigmet starts with an S. Severe starts with an S. We're talking about severe icing, severe turbulence, low-level wind shear, um, things that are not associated with thunderstorm, but still not anything we want to fly through. So if we see any kind of sigmet, guys, I do not want you flying through them. I either want you flying around them or well above them. So what's going on with our sigmets? Anything here? Anything else? Nope. We've got this little guy here with center weather advisory. Um, another way to look at this, let me think. Where did I see another way one time? Maybe it's down here. Yeah, okay, here's another way that you might want to see it here. I think you just click here. This is just another way to see them. You can't click on them though and get the information, so it's kind of old school. I don't really like it. You can click on certain ones here in the Dropbox, so there's no icing sigmets for us. IFR, mountain obscurations, right? None of those. No turbulence. And we already saw the convective one. So, you know, there's several ways. Really, my advice is to play around with the website. And then this one is usually pretty fun to look at. I like this one better than the other one I just showed you. Um, and you can actually click off on some things. So you can just see like one at a time. Do you guys see what I mean? Oops, sorry. So this one actually, that's going to be on our path, right, guys? If we go from Phoenix to Memphis, we've got this icing. So maybe I can copy paste that. Will that work? It's moderate icing. It's from 10,000 up to 12,000 feet. Um, I don't really see an issue with this. Now, if I had given you an MEL item that said you cannot fly known or forecast icing, this would be a no-go. You would have to either delay the flight or fly well around this this um, airmet, this airmet Zulu, right? So, moderate icing, not an issue. And I didn't see any non-convective segments. So we're done with the adverse conditions. Good with that? Okay, now I want us to go to our synopsis. So again, go back to aviationweather.gov, click on tools. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I didn't check turbulence. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, oops. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. We also have some moderate turbulence right here. So the first half of our flight. And right here is looking like, you know, we could enter that turbulence also. So let's go ahead and just it's better to have more, oops, better to have more information, right, than not enough. Your pilots are definitely going to appreciate having this information and not um, not surprising them. Best advice, especially for my dispatchers, would be always mention the critical. Your pilots want to know, you know, what might happen and how and what our plan is, right? So we've got moderate turbulence, moderate icing. Not an issue, not anything we can't handle um, so far. So now let's go to the, the next part of our observation. So go to Tools, Standard Briefing, and now we're on Synopsis. And the main ones I want us to look at here would be our Surface Analysis Chart and our Radar Summary. So let's look at those. You know, sometimes we call this our Surface Prog Chart, right? Prognostic. Sorry. Okay, let's take let's take a look. Go to forecast, prog charts, scroll down, 
to our surface prognostic chart. I wonder if it will let me copy paste this. Beautiful. Well, let's see. Okay. So let's see. What are we looking at here? Going from uh, Phoenix to Memphis. It would be nice if we had a tool that actually drew the line. And I actually, uh, Floor Flight will do that for you guys. I just don't have that option right now. But looks like right here that we're going to have a trough around Phoenix. Um, looking at our isobars, guys, they're widely spaced, so I'm not worried about strong pressure gradients or strong winds. Let's see, Phoenix to Memphis. Crossing over a warm front with low pressures. Looks like we have a, a dry line maybe to the south of us, which that could create some thunderstorms and instability there. And then we'll be flying into high-pressure systems. Cool. I'm not going to write all those down. Um, I think that was pretty straightforward. Nothing, you know, if there is something that you could explain, like perhaps we would talk about, you know, what are some characteristics associated with that warm front? We know there's going to be warmer temperatures. We know it's going to be less dense. But I did want you guys to see that that has a low pressure because sometimes there's a common misconception that warm fronts have high pressure systems. And you see that's just not true right now, that there's relatively lower pressure in that area. Um, Remember that low pressures, the winds flow counterclockwise, and high pressure flows clockwise. So that's all information. I want you to elaborate on everything you know. So when you tell me there's a trough here at Phoenix, talk about the fact that that's an elongated area of low pressure. And then looking at our radar summary, click on radar under observations. There's also this image down here, depending on which one you like. Um, to look at more. Oh, where's my, where am I at? Well, we're going to look here anyway now then. Click there. Mm, that's not the one I want to look at, sorry. I'm not sure why that other one isn't working right now, but we can just kind of see here that we know that we'll be encountering um, around Texas and Oklahoma a ton of thunderstorms, right? You've got the areas green, yellow, we have some pink right here. So um, those thunderstorms, it is unlikely that those are gonna move out that fast uh, right now. So definitely planning on having alternates and more fuel and, and flying uh, I'm going to probably try to fly south of the storms, but there's only because, look, going up north, guys, there's more just popping up, popping up, popping up, probably from outflow boundaries. And so I feel like flying south is a better option. Um, I do not know why this is. Oh, there you go. I don't know why I was acting weird, but here's um, some other good images here. You can see the thunderstorm moving from the west to the east. So... Definitely want to be behind or underneath, you know, well, well away from that while we're flying. Next up on our standard briefing, uh, we've got current conditions. Oh, you know what? I like that one too, rotated. Actually, when you clicked on the radar summary, this one's here. I like this also. Uh, you can see the wind flags and then the numbers are the tops of the thunderstorms so just flying through a um, bunch of junk right there right and the thing is is you can see like right here we could not fly above those guys we've got tops at 390 right there uh 380 so we're not flying above those we're not flying below below them um we're not flying through them, so our only option is going to be fly well around those. Okay. So, going back here. I did not copy-paste the radar chart. 
think I probably should, just so you can have it. Let me look back. Oops, wrong way. Just keep going. <laughs> there you go. Can I copy paste this? Um, I could screenshot it, but we'll just do it. Oops, just got right out of it. Let's see if I can pull it up. Thank you for being patient. Hopefully, this is helpful. All right, cool. That way it's just there. So, because, you know, once you look at this, guys, this weather isn't going to be here, right? Because this is real-time weather. So I thought it might be nice for you to actually be able to, to see what I, what I was talking about. Okay, so next up is current conditions, which would be our METARs. METAR. Remember, I always just go back to home base here. Current conditions, we've got our METARs, our PIREPs, our radar, and our satellite. And I would like to do our METARs for both departure and arrival, right? So go under observations, METARs, oops, low battery, and we can go down here and put in Phoenix, comma, Memphis, and include the TAF, we will probably, well, we don't need that right now. Get the METAR data, and then let's just make sure we can read through that together. So for Phoenix on the 30th day at 2251 Zulu, winds are from 300 at 4 knots, 10 sat shoot miles. Clouds are few at 9,000 AGL, another layer of few clouds at 25,000 AGL. Temperature is 24 degrees Celsius, dew point is negative 3 degrees Celsius. That's a huge spread. We're not worried about precip or moisture, right? Our altimeter is 30.06 inches of mercury. Remarks, it's automated with precipitation discriminator. Sea level pressure is 1016.8 millibars. The exact temperature is 24.4 degrees Celsius, and the exact dew point is negative because of that one, right, guys? Negative 2.8 degrees Celsius. Our arrival into um, our METAR for our destination on the 30th day at 2254 Zulu, winds are from? 210 degrees at 3 knots, 10 statute miles, light rain, overcast at 10,000 feet AGL. Uh, temperature is 14, dew point is 12. That is a close spread, which is why we have the rain. <clears throat> Altimeter is 30.09 inches of mercury. Remarks, it, the station is automated with precipitation discriminator. Sea level pressure is 1019.0 millibars. There has been 0 0.01 inches of precipitation fallen over the past hour. The exact temperature is 13.9 and the exact dew point is 11.7. Now let's look at our PIREP. What's PIREP stand for again? Pilot reports. And there are observations, right? So click on aircraft reps for reports. There you go. Let me scoot this little guy over. And you know what, guys? There is a flight path tool. I wonder if this will work. This type of Falcon Harmon. No. Okay. Scratch that. If you guys know how to do that, just shoot me an email or, or let me know. And we'll work on it. But just glance in here. We've got Phoenix. What do we got over here? Albuquerque has some moderate turbulence. Moderate turbulence, we already saw that in the forecast. Moderate turbulence for 737. Okay, so some moderate turbulence. Oh, did you guys see this one? Over Nashville, 
flight level, remember what this is, during descent. Type is a 737-800, that's us for the flight. Uh, moderate chop from 180 to 130, smooth below 130. Uh, and the exact location was from the Nashville VOR radial 240, 35 nautical miles out at 2200 Zulu. So as of now, any of the pi reps that might affect us are basically dealing with uh, moderate turbulence. And I would want us to be more specific down the road, right? But mod, moderate, what, what the word did I just make up there? Okay. Anything left for our current conditions category? Let's look. Tools, standard. Oh, we, we already did that. We looked at the radar already. We'll take a look again. I kind of have to click on each site on this one. I don't know if you're going to... I personally don't like this one as much. Yeah, I'm just not into this one, but you guys play around with the website and see what you like. Um, I like going to observations and radar better. It's just what I'm used to. Everybody's different. And then also while we're here, we'll look at our satellite imagery. And where do you think there'll be the highest cloud coverage? Right where all the thunderstorms are, right, guys? Right here. I love it when just everything comes together. Like, we're looking at pieces of the puzzle right now. Okay, next up, guys, under our standard briefing, it's going to be our en route forecast, which we're looking at our low and high level prog charts. They do not have mid-level prop charts for the U.S. anymore. Prob. Prog. Boop, boop. Okay. You guys doing good? Everybody awake? Are you putting your phones away? I see you. Oh. Um, you can click there, but also just go to forecast, prog charts. Click on low level. Wonderful. Let me just copy paste it instead of save it. Let's take a look. Boom. Here's our low level prop chart. Let's take a look. What do we have going on? Looking at um, valid at 06 Zulu, which we'll be looking at this one then, right? Because we're taking off at 0130, arriving at 0350 Zulu. So it looks like our freezing level is around 12,000 feet. Remember, this is a forecast. And we'll be flying into marginal VFR as well as IFR conditions with the red. Um, depending on how, how um, far south we fly, we do have this moderate turbulence right here, which is 180 up to 240, which is pretty much right exactly where those PIREPs, I believe, um, were, were um, reported. And then coming into Tennessee... Uh, marginal VFR as well. Looking at our high level prog charts, go back to forecast, prog charts, click here. And move me over here. What do we have? Let's see. Well, Here's our jet stream. Our jet stream is at flight level 410 at 100, the maximum speed right here. Each flag is 50 and each line is 10, so that's 120 knots. Right here, you can experience the, those strong winds from flight level 270 up to 490. And the maximum speed here is 140 knots. Along the jet stream, we also have some moderate turbulence Tops are at flight level 450, and the bases are below the chart, which is what? The chart starts at 250, right? So it's below 250. So uh, we also have a, um, about mid-flight, we'll have our tropopause height forecasted at 390. Well, that's important because we know tropopause heights are associated with clear air turbulence and jet stream. We can see there's not looking like any... Um, 
thunderstorms along here. Uh, they've already pushed out by this. Cause remember, this is a forecast. And um, nothing really else. Sometimes I wish they had the state eight outlines a little better. I mean, they don't have them at all, right? So we just kind of have to eyeball it. But so yeah, I mean, you know, if if we do experience some of that jet stream, it's all good because we are flying west to east, right? So we're not too concerned with that. I mean, if anything, it's gonna it's gonna help us out. Okay, was there anything left here? All right, guys, we're on our destination forecast now. Um, I will be right back. I have to charge my laptop. Hold on. Okay. Back to the forecast. Um, yeah, sorry. Sorry, I didn't um, realize my laptop was um, almost dying. So looking at our forecast, guys. We'll just go to tasks and let's look at both of them. Our Phoenix and Memphis. Of course, um, next time if we do need a destination alternate, we need to find one, right? But let's just say that we're gonna just pause on that because it's already it's a lot to practice the first time. So, and then, you know, we would read through this and see what's applicable for a 0 one thirty departure for Phoenix. We're looking at the first line and a zero three fifty arrival. Now we're looking at this one. It already changed from earlier, didn't it? So it updated. So if that happens while you're practicing, uh, make sure you, you verify you're using the most current weather. So um, nothing really uh, too crazy about that. Winds and temperatures aloft. Go to forecast. Go to winds. There's several ways to do this, guys. Um, sometimes I like looking at the wind flags. And we'll be flying at flight level 370. So maybe we'll stop it. Three, four. And you could kind of just glance at this. Oftentimes you can tell where the jet stream is at, right? We've got all these really strong winds right here. You guys see that? And that's exactly where the jet stream was in the forecast on the high level prog chart. You can also see where all your winds are coming from. Um, so it depends on, and then, you know, you can of course go lower to pick an optimal fly level. And then the other one I like to look at is just this um, kind of old school data one. So this would be the first part of the flight, right? And then that would be our second. So maybe I'll just copy these in case you want to go through. It's good to look at these guys to determine the best um, optimal flight level because we definitely want a, a tailwind in flight. We want a headwind for departure, headwind for arrivals right but for in route in route we want a tailwind so and you kind of just pick a few stations along along here phoenix so if we were looking at phoenix at three at thirty four thousand, do you guys remember how to decode this whenever the number starts with a seven or eight you have to subtract 50 from the winds and add 100 to the wind speed so 77 minus 50 is 27. So the winds are from 270 degrees at 110 knots. You add 100. And then the temperature is negative because we know temperatures are always negative above the 24,000 column. So these last three are always negative. So I would want you to go through here and kind of look at your winds, look at your stations that you think you might be using for your route. 
maybe we would look at Phoenix, Albuquerque. Here's the next half of the flight. Anytime you see rapid changes in wind direction or speed, we're, we know that that's going to be uh, possible areas of wind shear. Oklahoma. Anything? That catches our eye here. Hmm? Pretty straightforward. So, you know, I would just pick one or two stations along your route that you think you'll be using. Um, I wouldn't use your departure and arrival, guys, because you're going to use your METAR or TAS for your winds there. This is winds and temperatures a lot. Again, this is just a forecast, so it definitely can be incorrect. So, um, if you end up having a headwind and you thought you had a tailwind, we're gonna, we might have a situation with fuel, right? So just make note of that. Add in any notes that you see some changes to or something that kind of is like, huh, that might be an issue. Uh, go back to tools, standard briefing. We're almost done. Aviation notices, we'll look at um, special use airspace and we'll look at... Sorry, guys. We'll look at NOTAMs. You can click on each one of these, and I won't do this now for time purposes, but you'll click on each one for special use airspace, see if there's anything that affects your flight. The NOTAMs will be um, generally quite a bit of NOTAMs. So I would, pro I would look at all of them. This is how I actually do it. I don't know what's going on here. Let's click notice to airmen in the FAA box. And then click on the ATC SCC website. Click I've read and understood it, even though I haven't <laughs> read it. And then let's put in, oh, I think it says I don't have to have a K. Phoenix and Memphis search let's see if that format was correct oh they don't separate them out okay I don't like that let's just do one at a time I see there's a way to sort it but let's just start with Phoenix Um, the ones that I look at, we'll see if there's any uh, applicable to our approach. We'll look at the runways. We'll look at the taxiways. It's just kind of one of those things that we kind of breeze through because there's a lot of them. So it kind of takes practice. But I would provide all of them and then probably highlight the ones that you think are of um, worth noting in a dispatch release and in a weather briefing. Phoenix, runway 07 left, 25 right is closed. March 31st, 0600 will be there before that. But um, I don't remember what runway. Did we say what runway we were taking off from? I didn't make a note, so don't forget to don't forget to add in your runway. I forgot to do that but anyway there's you can see there's a lot there's a lot so just kind of go through them see what you think needs mentioning and then let's look for our Memphis Oops. take a look here I think we were using runway 09, if I remember right, for an ILS approach. Decision altitude is 509, the height above touchdowns 250 for all categories. 
temporary cranes up to 509 feet MSL beginning 4,580 feet northeast of runway 09. Temporary cranes up to 308 feet MSL beginning 1,205 feet northwest of runway 09. This started on February 28, 1609, and um, is going until 0522, May 22nd at 1609 estimated. So that might, that's definitely worth noting. Scanning through taxiways, field conditions. All right. So we went through our NOTAMs. And the last part, guys, is our ATC delays, which is our FAA OIS website. Nothing going on right now. No ground stops, no ground delay programs that affect us. Life is good. So let's call up a weather briefer and see if kind of what we've talked about is what um, he or she is going to say. Let's see. I'm going to call 1-800-WX-BRIEF. Welcome to Lido Flight Services. Please press or speak your response at any time. You can press <clears> 1 or I think you said you wanted to speak with a flight briefer. Is that correct? Yes. I didn't say anything. What state are you departing from or calling about? You may enter the two-letter state abbreviation on your keypad or speak your response now. Arizona. I think you said Arizona. Is that correct? Yes. Please wait while I connect you with a flight briefer. As far as airmen's climbing out of Phoenix and all, just before you get to San Antonio, they have moderate turbulence forecast between 27,000 feet and 41,000 feet, basically across Arizona and New Mexico. As you cross into Texas, it's still moderate turbulence. 27,000 feet to 41,000 feet, but again, before you get to San Antonio, you will exit that high-level service environment. Yes, sir. And then across the rest of the flight, they got moderate turbulence, uh, 21,000 feet to 41,000 feet in the Phoenix area, basically west, clockwise through east. Basically, they're on the uh, Mississippi, Tennessee border northward. As far as icing on this routing, the only place you'll get into the icing is when you make the turn at Alexandria, Louisiana, going northbound. They have moderate icing between the freezing level and 25,000 feet forecast, with the freezing level anywhere between 10,000 and 12,000 feet. Yes, sir. And then uh, low-level turbulence, basically you're going to be at altitude, so the low-level turbulence is not going to affect you. It's in New Mexico and western and southwestern Texas. So that's really no factor because you're going to be at altitude through there. The only other thing is across the uh, portion of Texas, uh, you do enter an airman or IFR conditions, but again, you're going to be at altitude and your routing will get you uh, outside of that airman for IFR going into Memphis. So really just IFR below you through Texas. Now, low pressure is sitting over there just south of the Texas Panhandle. A warm front extends into the Dallas area, goes down into the College Station area of Texas, then cuts across Alexandria, Louisiana, and a stationary front across extreme southern Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. High pressure is basically sitting over the Ohio River Valley with that high pressure. And the low pressure, uh, I mean, the warm front, a lot of moisture overflying that warm front, causing the rain shower activity, large area of rain shower activity throughout eastern Oklahoma, all of Arkansas, 
in northern Mississippi and western Tennessee. And this is in uh, basically light to moderate. Within the Arkansas and the Oklahoma-Arkansas border, they have heavy shower activity. Some isolated areas of extreme, extreme northwestern Louisiana. And looks like maybe over there around uh, Cleveland, Mississippi, uh, Drew, Mississippi area, there on the Mississippi, Arkansas border, a little area of, of extreme conditions there. But again, the IFR Center will help keep you clear from any of the activity going in. Yes, sir. And looking here at the current conditions right now, Phoenix, winds are 240 at 4 knots, visibility 10. Few clouds at 25 Celsius, and uh, temperatures 25 Celsius, dew point zero, altimeter 3005. At Memphis right now, surface wind 1207 knots, visibility 10, a ceiling 9000 overcast. We start above ground level. Temperature is 14, dew point one. In the altimeter 3005. Now, in Memphis, in the remote, the rain ended at 2256. Now, looking in through to Memphis here, we're going to get through here. Okay, basically, what I'm seeing is just few clouds around 25,000 going across Arizona and New Mexico. And as you get into the El Paso area going towards San Antonio, I'm seeing 25,000 broken. But most of the area is clear sky below 2,000 as you head towards San Antonio. Now, just before you get to San Antonio, and this takes in that IFR areas, but everybody around it, marginal VFR conditions due to visibility anywhere from 5 to 7 miles due to haze. And the ceilings are around 1,800 to 2,200 broken around that area. I'm seeing maybe a few lower ceilings. Again, you're going to be out and over flying that. Once you pass San Antonio, as you head in towards uh, the Alexandria area, let's see what we have here. I'm basically seeing ceilings anywhere from 9,000 to 1,000 broken there to the east of San Antonio going into Louisiana. Yes, sir. And by the time you get to Alexandria, a few clouds at 3,500 when you make your turn northbound, then that's when you start to look towards the rain shower that is being painted on the radar right now, and you're seeing anywhere from 4,000 to 5,000 overcast northern Louisiana going up towards Memphis. And as far as pilot reports, 34,000 feet, 25 miles west of El Paso. An Airbus 321, moderate turbulence. And then 30 miles west of Junction, Texas, I think Juliet Charlie Tango, at 41,000 feet of Boeing 737, moderate turbulence. And then over in Monroe, Louisiana, Mike Lima Uniform, if I'm that right. Let me double check here. Yes, and uh, this anywhere, see, at 3,000 feet, an Echo 170 had light lime icing below 1,000 feet. And also, an Echo 170 at 15,000. And also over Monroe, Temperature minus 28 Celsius with light chop. And that covers all pilot reports within 25 miles either side of your routing. Great. Now, Mr. Now, did you want me to look at basic in route forecast or just go right to the Memphis terminal then? Let's see. What did I have for en route? For en route, I looked at. Let's see. Get yeah, for the in route, um, for the in route, I looked at the low and high level prog chart, and I I would like to know um, what you would say for the high altitude chart for your briefing. Okay, because I got an in route 
basically the new graphical area forecast, basically clear skies at times cirrus all the way into San Antonio. Okay, great. Okay, once you get into the San Antonio area, I'm seeing uh, bases from there on towards Louisiana, anywhere from 600 to 900 overcast tops up around 16,000 feet, as high as 24,000 feet, the closer you get to Louisiana, with cirrus above all of this. And then by the time you get to Alexandria area, make your turn towards Memphis, that's where you're seeing bases of the overcast, MSL, 4,000 to 6,000 overcast tops, as high as 31,000 feet. Now this is around 03 Zulu that I'm looking at, here for Louisiana and Mississippi. And then going into Memphis, 7,000 to 8,000 overcast tops as high as 38,000 feet in the Memphis area. And I'm sorry, what was that tool that you just used? I didn't... This is a graphical forecast for aviation that just has where they would have oh. just clouds on there, precipitation or thunderstorms or wind. No, basically it just, it's a new aviation forecast for in route since they took the area forecast away from us they have a graphical area forecast now. oh wonderful i'll add that into our our project then okay great and, and so and then with that basically as you go on on this routing i took you on when you get to past san antonio is when you're basically going to be in some isolated thunderstorms possible to the north of your route there is a little area where the thunderstorms are going to be numerous, but this area all the way into Alexandria, just isolated thunderstorms around 02 to 03 Zulu to 04 Zulu. But when you make turn to Alexandria to go to Memphis, there is a chance for some uh, scattered thunderstorms northeastern Mississippi, west to southwestern, uh, or correction, north eastern louisiana west to southwest mississippi but that will end by zero four zulu and just rain shower basically in the memphis is what they have zero four to zero five zulu yes sir okay and that's going to be rain likely now let me get i got a little sheet here that Tells me exactly what some of these symbols are on here. Helps me. Oh, yeah, there's so uh, many so of them. See, we got the little tornado shaped with the uh, bars in it. So, moderate to heavy rain showers is what they're basically calling for in northern half of Mississippi into Memphis. Moderate to heavy rain showers is what you're looking at on your descent into Memphis. And that's the 04 Zulu, 03 to 04 Zulu time frame. And let's see here what we got here. Your altitude you told me was 37,000. Yes, sir. Let's get this back up here. And we're going to look at 36,000 feet. And the icing potential is basically light that I'm seeing, but going into Memphis, I do see area around Memphis to the north and east, moderate, chance for moderate, but that's getting 36,000 feet. Let me break this down and bring it down ever so slowly as we go through in, but basically even on the descent going through Louisiana, I'm seeing just light uh, icing potential. A correction on that, that was all turbulence, just uh, light turbulence possible on your descent. Now, let me go back through here. Looks like somewhere around 15,000 feet light, there, a trace of icing through Louisiana. You hit the Arkansas, uh, Mississippi, Louisiana area, then it picks up to light icing possible. In Memphis at 15,000 feet, heavy icing possible in that area. But all that by 12,000 feet is just uh, light icing, you no know, moderate icing looks like, but then by 9,000 feet, all icing, according to this forecast, is going to be north of Memphis. Okay. And so kind of looking through here, it looks like between 15 to 18,000 feet 
is where you're going to have your heaviest icing potential going into Memphis all the way to 24,000 feet, but then it starts being just like the moderate above 24,000 feet on the icing potential. Now for the Memphis destination forecast, let's see here, you're leaving at 0, 1, 0, 4, 30, you get into there roughly, so this forecast is actually good until 0, 6, 0, 0, Zulu. Surface winds of 0, 8, 0 at 4 knots, visibility 6 statute miles or greater, light rain showers, 6,000 scattered, 9,000 overcast, and that is above ground level heights. Yes, sir. And then your winds aloft, let me get the 37,000 here and get, the, okay, so these winds aloft are good till 03 Zulu, and for Memphis, at 37,000 feet, forecasting 270, 123 knots. That is a good tailwind for you. Yeah, exactly. I think that's because <laughs> um, I think that's because of the jet stream. Is that what you think? I, I, I basically yes. Okay, yes. cool. Let me get let me get this other map up here. I can take a look. Let's see. Yeah, jet well, stream, 24 can... hour, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Phoenix. All the way into central, uh, and it's uh, basically, uh, you're going to be kind of going out of it, going towards San Antonio, but to stay away from the thunderstorms, I think it's wise to continue on down that way, because even at El Paso, you're looking at 270, 128 knots. Right. And then you get into San Antonio, is where it's uh, 266 at 63 knots. So it does die down going down mm -hmm. into San Antonio area, but it keeps you away from the thunderstorms. Mm -hmm. So going across College Station is 270 at 84 knots, but Houston is 276 at 72 knots. And then, uh, let's see, what is that? Uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana is 276 at 74 knots. Now you'll be making the turn there at Alexandria Lake Charles, up through uh, Jackson, Mississippi, 270 at 90. And uh, Memphis is 266 at 110. And again, those are good until 0300 Zulu. So kind of go on uh, by to get in, since you're getting at 0430, I'm going to basically start at San Antonio after 03 Zulu. You're looking at 260 at 76 knots. And uh, Houston is 264, 74 knots. Lake Charles, 260 at 78. And then Memphis is 260 at 113. Again, those are all after 03 Zulu. Were you interested in temperatures up there? Um, yeah, I'm interested. <laughs> Okay, okay. So let me go back to uh, zero before zero three Zulu for Memphis minus fifty four Celsius, and then El Paso minus fifty three Celsius. San Antonio is minus fifty two Celsius, and then at after 03 Zulu, San Antonio is still minus 52 Celsius. Houston and College Station, minus 52 Celsius. Lake Charles, Louisiana is minus 52 Celsius. And then Memphis, minus 54 Celsius. Perfect. Okay, so that covers the winds a lot, and then we go into notams. And did you need me to go over the page? No, 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 pages? <laughs> no, sir, I would not do that to you. I went through them and found basically the few that were applicable to the approaches we use. So uh, we, I didn't see any um, ATC delays a minute ago either, unless you see something.
Let me take a look at that second because I got an ATC uh, box here. Let's see what we got going on. Ski country, don't need that. DCC. Okay, halfway through this page and no de no delays yet at any airports associated with those thunderstorms that I can see. Here's one for New York Center, so that's not going to affect you going into Memphis. Another one for New York, so no. Uh, right now as it stands, no ATC delays came up on my list here. Awesome. And so and then we always appreciate what pilot reports. We don't have to read them back to you anymore. So we take any pilot reports that you want to give us and put them in the system. Is there anything else I can take a look or help you with? You have been incredible. Thank you so much for taking time out of your night to do this. This is this is fantastic. I've been doing it for uh, 30 years and I enjoy talking to uh, classrooms and uh, to students. It's just it's to self educate them. It helps me. Well, you are awesome. I, I, I wish that I was sitting in class, but next time we're going to do um, a Zoom video, hopefully, and we can call you in. And can I ask okay. for you specifically? Or? Yeah, very seldom. I very. Think it's hard to get the same person. All right. Well, I hope I get... I, but, but, uh, but just know that uh, some people, I guess, they don't want to be recorded personally. Yeah. But there's no regulation against, you know, recording. Well, you, you're incredible. What was your name again? Donald Russell. Donald, thank you so much. Thank you for keeping, and I appreciate all the work you do. Okay, thank you so much. Have, Have a good one. Bye. Guys, that's a wrap for our standard weather briefing. Have a great night.